Okay, here we have a mid-sagittal view of the sheep brain. I cut right down the midline. First thing I did was stick my knife right into the longitudinal fissure and cut downward, but I didn't actually cut anything because the longitudinal fissure is pretty deep. I didn't cut anything until I got to this structure here, which is the corpus callosum. The anterior part of the corpus callosum is the genu. The posterior part is the splenium and in between is the body of the corpus callosum. Surrounding that, on the medial wall of the cerebral cortex, of each cerebral hemisphere, is going to be the cingulate gyrus, just like this. Extending ventrally down from the splenium is the fornix. This is actually the the sort of midline of the hippocampus, as we'll see later, the left and the right hippocampus curl up and meet in the middle as the fornix. Here we've got the optic chiasm, where the two optic nerves meet. Right here is, are the mammillary bodies. In between those is the, the hypothalamus, important for regulating lots of basic drives, like thirst, hunger, sex, and so forth. Dorsal to that is the thalamus. This whole thing here is the thalamus, and it's quite a bit bigger, as we'll see uh, on the next view. The part of the thalamus that I cut through, the part that crosses the midline right here, is called the mass intermedia. You can see it's got a slightly different texture right in here. Here we've got the pituitary gland. I'm sorry, the pineal gland, not the pituitary. The pineal produces melatonin. Here we've got the superior colliculus, important for eye movements. Inferior colliculus, part of the pathway for hearing. The cerebral peduncle, right there, between the mammillary bodies. And the pons, right here is the pons. Cerebral peduncle in between the two. Caudal to the pons is the medulla. Caudal to that is the spinal cord. This is a mid-sagittal section through the cerebellum. You can see the cerebellum has its own cortex called the cerebellar cortex. It's much thinner than the cerebral cortex and has a much bigger surface area because it's so highly convoluted. It folds in and out and in and out and in and out. In the middle of all that, it also has white matter. This white matter is known as the arbor vitae. 